you lift your hands to him this evening? If you are here and you are set for an encounter with the King of Kings, can you lift your hands and in one minute just speak to God? Tell him, Lord, I'm in your presence tonight. Have your way in my life. Do something new. This is the place of encounter. Do to me what you want. This is the time of surrender. Do to me what you want. Jesus, visit me tonight. Glorify your son in this place. Glorify your name in this place. In Jesus name Ezekiel chapter 2 verse 2 One prayer before we sit down I want you to be intentional tonight When you come before the presence of God You are not before the presence of an earthly monarch you are before the father of spirits the creator of everything that is created and so there is a reverence that we must greet his presence with you must ensure that you are not distracted by anything or anyone around you you must adore his presence and be open to receive from him and in the spirit of receiving, I want us to just pray one prayer from this scripture. Ezekiel 2 verse 2. Then the spirit entered me when he spoke to me. How many of you believe something spiritual, something eternal will enter into your, your, your body, enter into your spirit, enter into your destiny, enter into your life and turn it around for good? And set me on my feet and I heard him who spoke to me can we pray in just two minutes and ask the Lord for an encounter through his word the Lord as your word comes forth let something beyond the natural something extraordinary happen to me let something penetrate my life my spirit my destiny I'm here for a touch I'm here for a turn around. Do something new. Something that cannot be denied. Come on, lift your voice. Raise it high. Raise it high. Raise it high. Raise it high. You 
name of the Son. Let's sing it together. Rua Kelohi, Rua Kelohi, Rua Kelohi, sing it to me.
from the rising to the setting of the sun. Your name, Adonai, from the rising, from the rising to the setting of the sun. Just the verses, Adonai say, Adonai, say Adonai, Adonai, call him Adonai, just the drums, say Adonai, You lift your voice and declare it. No name like your name is to be heard. Say Adonai. Call his name Adonai. is here. Spirit of the Lord, yeah, yeah. you are gathering fill this Shaddai, 
el shada el elion el madona age to age you're still the same by the power of your name el shada el shada Sana maya de na 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 sana. Kila bahato isudama. Jesus. Jesus. Get me water, please. Get me water. Shiba patas. We give you praise. El Shaddai El Shaddai El Elyon to age just in the sea by the power of your name El Shaddai El Shaddai El Elyon El Adonai I will praise and lift you up Jesus, your presence is here. Just get lost in his presence. Just get lost in his presence. Just worship him now. of deliverance whenever I am afraid I trust in you you are my hiding place oh you are always fill my heart with some of deliverance Father, tonight make your presence known. Let your glory saturate this place. Let men be brought into dimensions of spiritual encounters 
experiences that cannot be defined from the natural perspective thank you for the ministry of your spirit thank you for your fire that burns in this place blessed be your name in Jesus name please take your seat just quietly if you can but if you want to remain kneeling or lying just take your seat if you can if you want to remain in the mood and the position of worship you can remain so as the deep panted for the word I saw my soul Don't get up the deep oh, oh, for you alone You alone at my heart Desire And just be quiet everywhere for you my friend and you are my brother even though you are a king king and king of my life So much more than anything to worship you, I leave to worship you, I leave, I leave to worship you. This is why we are made. This is why we were born. Oh, to worship you, I live. To worship you, I live. I live to worship you. Oh, to worship you. This is my heart's cry to worship you. This is my desire, Lord. Oh, to worship you. I live to worship you. I live, I live to worship you. Sometimes your worship cannot be expressed in words, and so you say, Oh, 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 Calls worship in spirit. Oh, when you have no words to express what your heart feels for him. Oh, <laughs> oh, Jesus.
Yahweh 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 We call you Yahweh Yahweh His name Yahweh, Yahweh. Oh, oh Yahweh. Yahweh. Yahweh, say Yahweh. Oh, sing Yahweh. Yahweh. Call His name. Change at night. You are the Lord. You change at night. This is the protocol for an encounter. You are the Lord. You worship until you are lost in the worship. You worship until you literally forget your physical atmosphere. If you are not ashamed to worship him like this, then he is not ashamed to visit you. You are the Lord. You are the mighty God. You your name Jesus we praise your name Jesus holy most holy is the Lord God is the Lord the Lord God. I feel his glory. Holy, most holy is the Lord God. Is the Lord God. Most holy. Holy most holy is the Lord God, is the Lord God. Oh, come, let us adore. Oh,
Jesus. One more time, lift your voice and say, Oh God, bless Adam. Listen, the reading worship you now. Holy, holy, holy are you, Lord. I feel the presence of angels in this place. Very strong activity of angels. Worship you now. sound of heaven the sound of many waters it's the sound of worship coming from the throne there are shouts of adoration I see men from every nation lift their voice to make his glory known 
and they're singing holy 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 yeah you love lift your hands where you are holy 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 yeah you love the elders and angels bow the elders and angels bow the redeemed worship you. We worship you now. All the elders and angels bow. The redeemed worship you now. we bless you in the congregation of the saints we fuse in with the worship of heaven we thank you because right now heaven is in this place and so we say that you are good and all the miracles you God has brought us joy and we are changed and all the hope we have we place in you right just sing it softly father we declare father we Softly, that we love you. Declare, we declare everlasting love. Father, we declare, we declare that we love. Personalize it to him. I love you, I love you Lord. I love you, Lord. I love you more than life. I love you more than money. I more than cars, more than houses. More than good things of this life, yeah. I love you more than family, Jesus. 
love you more than my job. Hey, Barakataya Kuya Tayana. I love you more than everything, Jesus. I truly mean it. I love you, Lord. Psalms 63 Psalm 63 I want every one of us to be conscious tonight the glory of God is in this place already if it is okay please reduce movement if it is okay just reverence God by remaining still where you are and I beg you to open your heart as you listen open your heart to receive I'm going to teach briefly I'm just going to teach very briefly and while I teach there will be encounters that many of us will enter into Please listen carefully. While I'm teaching, people will enter into spiritual encounters. Some of you will be caught up in visions. Some of you will begin to sense the presence of a being around. When I said no movement, the ushers should also follow suit. At some point, some people may be so strong under the anointing that they may not be able to help themselves. However, whatever happens, don't be distracted. I'm not going to teach in details. I'm just going to teach on the surface. But the power of what I'm going to reveal tonight will be manifest in this place. So please, pay me your undivided attention. Let your heart and your ears listen to what I have to say. Psalm 63 verses 1 and 2. I'm teaching briefly tonight on the mystery of spiritual encounters. Psalm 63 verses 1 and 2. O God, you are my God. Early will I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you. Have you gotten to that point before? Have you ever in your life come to that point where everything around you and about you pants for God? Have you gotten to the point where you become so obsessed about God more than the necessary pleasure? And comfort around your life. This night as I teach. I want every one of us not only to pay attention. But to really search deep into our heart. Because this night. Many of us. God will restore us back to a place of fellowship. And for some of us God is taking us to a depth of intimacy with him. He said, my flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. So I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. He says, early will I seek you. Early will I seek you. When a man is desperately in need of something, he goes in search of that thing proactively he doesn't wait for people to tell him that he needs that thing he makes a desperate search and so the psalmist says I long for you so much that I will seek you early seeking God early is not only rising up in the morning to pray that is good seeking God early is not only coming to church before anyone else for service that is also good seeking God early is not just coming for 
departmental meetings or subgroup meetings earlier than everyone else that is good but seeking God early can also mean realizing in life especially at your youthful age that all that you will ever need in this life has been summed up together in the person of God and you don't wait to grow old before looking for God there's a narrative that we have to change in this generation many people believe that God the thing of God is or the things of God is only for elderly people no no this statement was made by a young man a young man filled or you know encountering all the distractions that we all encounter now a young man having all kinds of things around him like we have now but deciding in himself that all that he will need is God that's what it means to seek God early to realize early in life in your youth that God is everything that you can ask for every other thing that we look for or that we run around chasing after has a lifespan can come to an end the one thing that you can never have enough of is God I cannot have enough I cannot have enough I cannot have enough of you cannot I cannot have enough Sing it from your heart Not have enough I cannot have enough of you I want you to sing it one more time from the depths of your being I cannot have enough I cannot have enough Say, my soul longs for you my soul thirsts for you the soul of a man is filled with all kinds of distraction that's why when you go to pray it becomes difficult for you to quiet the noise that is in your mind our soul wanders around many of the things of this life the soul is perhaps the busiest center in the world but that a man will come to a point where he shuts down every desire inside of him and all he desires and, and tests after is God. He said, my soul tests for you. My flesh longs for you. And here is the funny part. He said, in a dry and thirsty land where there is no water. That means the situations around me are not good enough for me to be seeking God at this time. Dry and thirsty land means joblessness. Dry and thirsty land means sickness. Dry and thirsty land means situations and circumstances around your life that are not favorable. That are enough to discourage you from looking for God. That the last thing that you desire is God. Simply because your life is not as it were in a settled state like you wanted to yet the psalmist says in a dry and thirsty land i still long for you can we come to that point where we are so obsessed with god more than our needs can we come to that point where we are madly in need of god that you forget about the needs of this life He says, so I have longed for you. Is that what he says in verse 2? He says, so I have looked for you. That means he was communicating the desperation of the previous verse. So, when he says, my soul tests for you, my flesh longs for you. He said, this is how. That's what it means when he says, so I have looked for you. In the sanctuary, to see your power and your glory. Brothers and sisters, the Christian life, the end of the Christian life is always one experience 
with God after another. It is never theory. It is never supposed to be spoken about. Yes, it can be taught, but it will be understood when it is experienced. The Christian life is supposed to be an eternal experience with the maker and the lover of your soul. It's a lifetime experience of knowing the one in whose image you were created. To see your power and your glory. John chapter 1 verse 1. First John, sorry, First John chapter 1, verse 1. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen, which with our eyes, which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled, is communicating to you different levels of experiencing God. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard. You heard about him in Sunday school. You heard about him on Sunday service. As a matter of fact, you listened to a sermon this morning. You heard about him in your family devotion. You hear about him when you listen to a message. But can you go beyond just hearing about him? That which we have heard, which we have seen. In Job chapter 42, in verse 5, he said, Behold, I have heard of thee with the hearing of the ear, but now, go to that place briefly. We are coming back to 1 John. He said, Behold, I have heard of you by the hearing of the ear. He said, But now my eyes see you. There's a difference in that. To hear about God, yet to see him. That this Jesus that they keep calling the name every day. This Jesus that you have been hearing about from childhood. You have heard how he healed the, the, the sick. How he cleansed the lepers. How he raised the dead. How he loved the poor. How he was friends to sinners. How he died on the cross. You have heard how he resurrected from the grave. And he seated at the right hand of, of, of the majesty on high. You have heard about what he did with the apostles. You heard of all the amazing things that he has done. But there comes a time when you literally with your eyes see him. There's such a place like that. It's not left for pastors alone. It's an experience that every one of us must come into. This evening I only came to stir a hunger in you. For a deeper walk of experience with God. The generation we live in now has made it possible for us to be distracted with many things, including the things of God. But the experiences of God are personal. Back to First John, he said, That which we have heard, which we have seen, which we have looked upon. To look is different from seeing. To look is to continually see. Oftentimes in scripture, God trying to train the prophets, he will ask them, son of man, what seest thou? In other words, I want you to look. It is in looking that you understand what is seen. It is in looking that you can perceive that which is seen. The Bible didn't say when we see him. It said when we behold him with unveiled faces. To continually look upon him. That means it's not a one time encounter. It's a continuous experience. Do you know that you can walk with God to that point? Where you can have an almost daily experience with him. Where with your eyes you can behold the beauty of his glory. When we talk about the glory and the power of God. Many people you can't understand it. It's not an English word. It's not an English word. The word glory originally is the Hebrew word kabod. When you bring it down to Greek language, it has five, about almost five words to explain it. So how will English language help to explain what 
you have several words explaining in Greek language. When you talk about glory, power, it's something that you can only understand by experience. It is the fullness of God that can only be measured out to a man from one dimension after another and it can last for eternity. Brothers and sisters, that's the only other thing that we will do in heaven. Aside from worshipping God, that is why many of us that don't know how to be humble in the presence of God and worship Him, many of us that are always conscious about people looking around you to lift up your hands before your maker is too much for you. I wonder what you will do in heaven. That's why I'm not ashamed to do it when I stand here. It's just a continuation of what I do in my secret. I don't want to go to heaven and be irrelevant because preaching will end here. So I'm training myself in the secret place, learning how to spend time worshipping. Worshipping until I'm lost in the worship. It is only when you become lost in the worship that you can behold him. That which we have seen, that which we have looked upon, and our hands have handled. Brothers and sisters, the Christian life is a living experience. And tonight God is ready to take someone there. God cannot be taught. God cannot be spoken about. God can only be experienced. A minister or a preacher is one called to bear witness to the experiences that he has had with God. That's the full definition of a minister. You are called to bear witness. It's more than just having a collar. So if all you know is just the written word of God, don't venture out into ministry. If all you know is songs, don't venture out into ministry until you truly experience God. In the kingdom of darkness, witchcraft is not just an exercise book you can carry and teach people. The first thing they do after initiation is teach you how to fly. Teach you how to communicate and interact with the demonic world. Why? Because spiritual things are best experienced. If we must go against that, that level of darkness, then we must be men and women of experiences. We must be men and women. And if you don't have any of such in your account with God, then brothers and sisters, this is the night where you have to cry to God. This is the night where you have to tell God, I'm sorry I've been pursuing too many mundane things. Many of the things we pursue in this life are things that are not relevant. He said, but seek you first the kingdom and its righteousness and all the things that the Gentiles pursue, money, cars, house. Don't you realize that the more we chase after these things, the more we get them is the more we want to get them. There's never enough of these things. So how much of it will you keep pursuing? How much? And as you pursue, you notice that you don't have peace. The more money you have, the more restless you are. Keep 10 million in your, in your house this night. I assure you, you will not sleep. I mean in cash. The vigil that you refuse to keep for God. The vigil that you refuse to, just to sing for one hour in His presence in the night. Because of 10 million, you will not sleep. Why has Satan deceived us in this generation? Why are we so much in a hurry after mundane things? Things that at the end of this age will not count. The Bible says many has pierced because of the love of money. Many have, have pierced themselves with many sorrows. But tonight God is calling us to a place of rest. You are my rest. Oh, 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 you are my rest. Oh, 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 spiritual.
spiritual encounters are real time experiences that are divinely programmed real time experiences that are divinely programmed by the office of the Christ realized through the ministry and person of the Holy Spirit in the life of an individual which is most common during seasons of isolation and deep solitary confinement that's my definition of spiritual encounters if you didn't get it you can listen to the message and write it I didn't this is I had to write from an experience this is not a textbook I had to put my pen and write from my experience with God what is a spiritual encounter and there you have it it's a real time you know what real time is happening live it's not something you tell people about that happened many years ago the last time you spoke in tongues was 10 years ago the last time you felt the presence of God was 15 years ago in a, in, in, in a university fellowship the Bible says Jesus Christ is the same yesterday today and forever it is a real-time experience it is so powerful and so real that as you communicate it to people the environment within which it happens begins to find expression right there if I'm telling you that I met the Lord Jesus face to face you should not listen to that conversation and remain ordinary no so it's not something you can lie about is a real time experience it is divinely programmed by the office of the christ why did i say by the office of the christ simple the bible says that he has been exalted lord and christ he is the administrator of the kingdom of god jesus himself so everything that will come to man on account of salvation comes through that office of christ christ is not just his name christ is the office Therefore, God has highly exalted him and given him a name that is above every other name. In the Greek, that word name is not really referring to name. It's referring to authority. It's referring to office. Otherwise, why will he say that at the name Jesus? I thought that when he was to be born, the Bible says he shall be called Jesus. For he shall save his people from sin. Then why is it many years later after he had died and resurrected, Paul is saying that on account of dying and resurrecting, he received another reward, which is a name. He was not talking about the name Jesus, no. He was talking about the office that Jesus received. That office is Christ, the administrator of the purpose of God. So the reason why the Holy Ghost is on earth now and can be poured out on people and can bring men into spiritual experiences is because Jesus is now occupying that office of Christ. So he is the one that will decide to show himself to you. And he does it through the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Do we understand that? Revelations 1 verse 1. He said the revelation of Jesus Christ which God gave him to show his servant. Which God gave him to show his servant. Which God gave him. So brother and sister, it's not just about a dream. It's not about a vision. It is the revelation of a personality. It is an individual that you should know. And God has granted that according to season and time, he can bring his servant, which is you and I, into that experience. How? He say, and he sent and signified it by his angel to his servant John. When you see signify, when you see signify, it's talking about signs. Signs. In other words, spiritual manifestations that can happen through the ministry and the person of the Holy Ghost. I hope you know that angels can minister on earth as an extension of the office and the person of the Holy Ghost. I wish I had time. 
The Bible says he walks upon the wings of the wind. You know what that means? That means the Holy Spirit depends on the ministry of angels to fulfill his role as the third person of the Godhead on earth. So it is the Lord Jesus Christ and he has programmed that in every season of your life according to you your birthday is when you hit that particular date every year that's your birthday in the physical but in the realm of the spirit your birthday is when another cycle of time and season comes around for you to have a spiritual experience the first spiritual experience you had was your born again experience so your born again experience opened you up to the realm of the spirit and all the experiences you can have there so anytime you have another spiritual experience it is only building on what happened when you were born again are we here according to god when that happens that's your birthday so it is wise for a christian to try to collide his physical birthday with a spiritual birthday that's why he says you are my son today have i begotten you psalms 2 verse 7 in message translation he says today is your birthday verse 8 he says, ask of me and i will give thee many people ask for all kinds of things on their birthday but can we come to a, a point where when it is time for your birthday all that you ask of god is more of him and you tell god lord the last time i experienced your presence was a while ago is that all that there is about you can i see something new can i know something new a witch is there having experiences with lucifer how can i worship a god that seems to be far from me can't i know you as a person the more i know you is the more i want to know you jesus more of you can't i know you as a person if your power is real can't i see it at first at first hand experience in my life why do i always have to tell people what i heard about you why can't i give my own testimony revelations was written as a testimony of one man funny enough he was in the isle of patmos he was in prison they took him there because all they tried to do to kill him would not work they threw him into boiling oil he refused to fry they hung a huge stone around his neck and threw him into water and they left him for three days and three nights under the sea he refused to drown they did everything and he refused they say okay the only way is just banish him to that island let him starve to death and in the middle of circumstances and situations you know why you are overladen with depression you know why you are overladen with discouragement you know why you are filled with despair about the things of this life it is because you have been living your life for a long time hinging on physical situations and circumstances many of us have not experienced joy what you have is happiness if you know what joy really is you will know that there is joy in the midst of a storm that there is joy in the midst of a situation he said though the fig tree does not blossom nor the vines bear their fruit he said even when the stall is empty and the calf the cows do not produce their cows he said yet will i rejoice that one is not happiness that one is joy that is a spiritual substance that is alive in you when you begin to experience that welcome to a life of spiritual encounters and experiences many of us seem powerless against the arsenals of the enemy you know why because your life is not rich in spiritual encounters when a demon through an individual looks at you what they are looking at that makes them scared is a bank account filled with experiences with god you know why because every time god appears to you every time god reveals himself to you he has left that dimension of himself in you 
So unknown to you, you now look like that dimension that appeared to you. People see you as the normal you, but wait till the spirit look at you. He said, Jesus, I know. Paul, I know. You know why? Paul too had been brought into the experience of authority that was in the capacity of the Christ. That's why when I finish any kind of program, I don't go back and start binding devils. No. They know me. They know me. They know that Jonathan is dead. They know. <laughs> I went to preach somewhere. And while deliverance was going on, I think it was recently in, in, in FCS there. While I was you know, ministering the power of God and challenging spirits. I heard myself make this command. I say, you know my voice. Come out of them. And they came out. Now to somebody who thinks that is pride, it's not pride. That's the place God wants to bring you to. When they look at me, you see the physical Jonathan, but they see deposits of Christ. He say until Christ be formed in you. That is what eternal life is. This eternal life we are talking about. It's not just about being born again. No. It's about an experience of a life that is the God kind. That's why John could not die. Everything they did to him. He had entered into that same place with Jesus. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believes in me and lives will never die again. That was where John entered into. He that believes in me and lives. He was right there. That was why nothing they did could kill him. And John did not die. He fell asleep. But today you see accidents. All kinds of things happening to believers. The question is why? lack of spiritual encounters tonight are you ready to can you forget about your house and in few minutes when we are about to pray can you cry to god can you for once not be ashamed and say god based on what i'm hearing now i i i i'm really my life now is empty i need more of you fill me up till i overflow I want to run over, I want to run over, fill me up, until I overflow, I want to run over, I want to run over, sing it one more time, fill me up, till I overflow, I want to run over. Hey, hey, hey. Can you cry? Fill me up. Till I overflow. I want to overflow with your life. I want to overflow with your power. I want to overflow with your glory. Fill me up. Hey. Till I overflow. I gotta run over. Hey, Katara Makaya. I wanna run over. Till cancer responds. Till the dead comes to life. I wanna run over. Listen. Don't settle for an ordinary life. Please be seated. Don't you dare settle for an ordinary life. There's no gain in it. I'm telling you. There's no gain. A lot of people want to have money in abundance. Have houses. Have cars. Have all of these things are good. But brother, there is only one thing that can overflow from your life. And give life to men. 
If you give money to a man, you can help him solve some needs, some problems. But when he's faced with death, face to face, money cannot buy life. I don't know about you, but I want to overflow with divine life. I want to contain something that my generation will look for. I want to overflow with the life of God that cancer will no longer be cancer around me. I want to overflow with life that sicknesses and diseases will be paralyzed around me. I want to overflow with so much life of God that nothing dead around me remains dead, including the finance of an individual. What kind of an experience is that? A lot back to back. That's the divine life. I don't know if I can even finish this teaching today. I think we need to do it another. I, 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 can't, I can't just do it. Can I rush quickly before we are, clo- before we are done? I wanted to share with you basic truths about spiritual encounters so you could understand, but I don't think we have time for that. So very quickly, there are different classes and kinds of spiritual encounters. Of course, spiritual encounters are encounters with the realm of the spirit that an individual has based on the programming of the office of Christ, of the Christ and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. I've already told you, it happens in seasons of isolation. Proverbs 18 verse 1, King James translation, is a true desire, a man, having separated himself. God cannot encounter a man with people. You must come out of the crowd and be with God in the cloud. Too many noise around you will not allow you to see God. No. Where Bishop read, the Bible says on the sixth day, he took three and he went to a high mountain. Spiritual encounters, experiences with the divine are things that cannot happen until you are isolated and separated. And I'm not just talking about physical isolation alone. That is good. I'm also talking about isolation in your mind. That you can be in an office, but your mind is stayed on him. He shall keep him, not they. He shall keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on him. The deep things of God are not given to people. They are given to individuals. That's why you see the book of Revelation. I saw, I saw, not we saw. Don't think that because you are in pneumatic and you are with the crowd, everything happening, no. No, no. This is only a template, a platform to stir every one of us to begin to ignite or initiate a personal experience with God. You can come here from January to December and if you don't decide to separate your heart and begin to create the posture that allows you to seek after God, you will still be the same person. At best, you will just be part of a a meeting. But there comes a time in the life of a young man. There comes a time in the life of a young lady where you decide, all I'm after now is God. I'm done chasing after other things. Let me try something that is sure in his reward. So there are different classes of such encounters a man can have. The first is the new birth experience. John chapter 3 verse 3. Jesus said, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is a spiritual environment. is a spiritual atmosphere that portrays the influence and the dominion of Christ within a given territory. That's the kingdom of God. And so when you become born again, the part of you, the spiritual dimension of you that can allow you to participate with that place has been made alive. Unbelievers cannot have spiritual experiences. No. 
they can't have spiritual encounters an unbeliever has his spirit is dead he's only a victim of anything that happens around and when i say unbelievers i'm not don't, don't think about people smoking and dancing in the club no there are some people in church that are unbelievers and if you are here this night you will have the opportunity to return back to god the new birth experience is the first dimension. The Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1, in verse 23, Not being born again of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, which is the word of God, which lives and abides forever. To as many as received him, John 1, 12, he gave them power to become sons of God, even to them that believed in his name. Verse 13, Not who were born not of the will of flesh or the will of man, but of God. So it's an ex it, it kickstarts your experiences with God. The next dimension or the next kind of such encounters is your encounter with the Word of God. Now that you are born again, the Word of God can make sense to you because you were your spirit was created by the same substance, the Word. So every time you open the Bible, now that you are born again, you are not just going to be reading words and pages. No. It's an, it's an interaction between you and your source. A man can know God, can begin to know God via the word of God. And when I talk about the word of God, I'm not talking about just the Bible alone. No. The Bible is the written word of God. That is the basis for fellowship with God. But you must move from the written word to the revealed word. That is now the product of fellowship. You move from just what you read to a life that comes from the pages of that book to you. You call it understanding. It is a living force. The word. Do you know that God can send his word to a man? And that word does not need to be told what to do. It will come and fulfill its exactitude in the life of that man. Psalms 107 verse 20. He sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. So when the word came, the word came because they needed healing. But then the word saw that they were under the shackles of darkness. So the word was able to break the bondage and the yokes of darkness and bring them deliverance. He didn't have to tell his word, make sure you deliver them. No. I wish I had time, I would have shown you the six dimensions of the word of God. There is the written word of God. There is the revealed word of God. There is the spoken word of God. And this and this and that one. He sent his word that you can so fellowship with God in his word. People think you are crazy. Those days I remember when I, my, my, my brother said it here. Melifno said it here. I'm going to the toilet. I carry my Bible. I know what you, you carry. Harley Quinn. What's the name? Those novels. Those romance novels. And many of us because we have so fellowship with those novels. Our minds are now living in those fake and, and pseudo pseudo uh, 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 world of romance some of us our world has been it has been corrupted with films so your approach to life your perspective is that of a movie that's why real things don't happen in your life that's why real miracles don't happen in your life because you are you are interacting with movies can you interact with the word of god like that a time will come where you so interact with the understanding of God's word. You now become the sent word. You. You. He said, go and show yourself to Ahab and I will send rain. How do you connect the appearance of a man and the introduction of another season? Can you come to that point? It's not only for apostles. You too can get there. Somebody is praying and fasting for three days. And on the third night, apostle appears to him. And something happens in his life forever. Somebody drinks a bottle of water, gives it to be poured on somebody, and it creates a, 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 a week-long experience in that person's life. Is he ordinary? No. That's the sent word. 
the word the third dimension is the spirit the holy spirit and their spirit realm you can encounter or have spiritual encounters with the holy spirit and it is the holy spirit that allows you to interact with the realm of the spirit the realm of the spirit is not only the realm of the holy ghost is a realm of spirits there are spirits there that is why it is good for you to first have a relationship with the holy ghost so that when an evil spirit is coming around your realm to deceive you the holy ghost which is the spirit of truth can make you forewarned and forearmed how do you know if this being that appeared to you is jesus you will know by the spirit how do you know if a man is coming around you claiming he wants to marry you but in his heart he wants to waste your time it is the holy ghost in you that will help you discern their motive discernment is not suspicion that's why many people make mistakes by suspecting you can't replace it discernment is discernment suspicion is suspicion how do i know that this business is a fraud the spirit of god the one that searches all things the one that searches the heart of men the one that will show you three days to that business deal that these three guys they are fraud stars don't do anything with them the bible says that the wise men being warned in a dream they took another route and they did not go back to herod many of us are victims of many things in this life because we don't know the holy ghost and the more you try to escape knowing him in your in your pride and your arrogance i beg to say yeah because that's it pride or arrogance every time you try to avoid god from that equation is an is a statement of pride and arrogance why can't we be broken enough to say god i need you any life without the holy ghost quote me anywhere is a living dead is a living dead it's only a matter of time you can take anything from me but don't take the holy ghost don't take the holy ghost with the holy ghost i don't need a pulpit where's this girl she has not testified where's any she has not testified. we are coming back from prayers one day on the road and then i discovered that she has not been seen with one of her eyes for about 17 years according to her on the road on the road on the road as soon as she told me that i stopped her there laid my hands on the eyes and it opened there you don't need a pulpit you need the holy ghost you can take him anywhere it is walkable anywhere how god anointed jesus of nazareth with the holy ghost and with power what did he do old crusade no jesus didn't hold crusade anywhere he was crusade started the bible said the multitude heard of him and they trek there was a time he crossed on boat to the other side they look for the longer route on land because wherever jesus is good happens who went about doing good what do you carry around gossip You can't meet with people and they know that there's something extraordinary about this man. You can't meet with people and the next time they meet you, they say, you are my lucky charm. I want to be around you. Anytime you are around me, something good happens to me. Do you know you can carry favor like an atmosphere? I was telling them at the breakfast prayer yesterday that I was eavesdropping on two people, two men. They were having a conversation. They didn't know I was hearing them. And one of them was asking the other one, have you sown into apostle's life? He said, what are you waiting for? Take your money there. That's a very fertile land. And he began to give him testimonies. They didn't know I was hearing them. And only God knows in different parts of this world how they are discussing to favor me. Look, brothers and sisters, it's not, a, it's not a thing of luck. Walk with the Holy Ghost. Take your place. Take your place, Holy Ghost, Holy Ghost, you are the Holy Ghost, thank 
your place take your place take your place take your place and then the fourth is the ministry of men spiritual encounters can happen to you when you meet with some men that have fraternized with certain dimensions of the realm of the spirit you know the realm of the spirit is like a place listen carefully we are about to pray the realm of the spirit is like a, is like a country just the way you have Nigeria with several states and every state has several local governments that's how the realm of the spirit is so he said, we have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Where? In Christ. There are different locations. Now, some men, by reason of their work and their interaction with God, the environment, the resources, and the benefits of some of these spiritual locations have been localized in their life. This thing you call favor is a location in the realm of the spirit. Some men, by reason of their work with God, they have so fraternized with that area, that spiritual area, that all that is in that place now is localized. It's no longer a place. It's now a living reality in their life. So if you are looking for favor, just go around them. There are some men, when they enter a city for a program, all the demons check out for two months. Ask Riyad Bonke. It's only Riyad Bonki that you see people, the native doctor will come from the bush and trek to, trek to the city with his charms. Who told him? They didn't say come and submit your charms. Everybody, all the witches and wizards, they'll be coming out one by one. And all he preaches is salvation. Make no mistakes. The message is one thing. The man is another. Do you know that you can so fellowship with God in prayer that your life now becomes the expression of that reality prayer that when you come around a place if by mistake anything happens people will find themselves praying do you know there are some music ministers and anytime they are singing people start praying they are singing songs though, but people are praying and what have you what have you encountered with God what have you localized if there is nothing like that in your life, then my brother, my sister, I'm sorry to tell you, you have been living an ordinary life. He said, they know not, neither do they understand. They walk in darkness. That's why you, you think you are the same with your colleagues in your office. That's why when people are complaining in your neighborhood, you complain with them. Because you are not rich in spiritual experiences. There are realities that you have not seen that can make you like Job say, For I know that my Redeemer, it didn't say our Redeemer, my Redeemer. All of you experience economic meltdown, but I know that my Redeemer. I told someone, I told a young man recently, I, I, he said that, that, that I think dollar was 820, I don't know how much dollar is now. I'm not a prophet of doom. It will get to 1,000. Just watch. And you know what? The higher it gets, the richer I am. Yes. I know the mystery to kingdom wealth. I know it. I know it. That's why I make bold to say, if, I, if you are stranded in a place, you don't need to look for God again. Just look for me. If I'm there, it's over. I know it. Now, you too can beat your chest when you have walked with God to that point. You see, you, 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 you become filled with the possibilities that exist from where you come from. Don't you know that you are from above? Don't you know that you were dead and your life was hid with Christ in God? Don't you know that you are spiritual? You are not of this earth. And therefore, you are not normal. You are not natural. Natural things cannot happen to you like others. You are the catalyst for possibilities. If God is looking for a way to turn the situation around, He just needs you. That's who you are. So how do I access divine encounters? Number one, be born again. 
Except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. Number two, hunger and desire. Hunger and desire. Moses told God, he said, I beseech you. I think that's Exodus 33 verse 18. Show me, please. Give it to us. Exodus 33 verse 18. He said, please show me your glory. That's the cry of a man that is hungry for God. A desperation. This generation, you know, oh no, no. We are too proud. We, are, we have so many investments that we think we don't need God. Because we think that the importance of God in our life is to meet needs. If you think God is about meeting needs, you just, what's the word I will use? You fall God hand. You have disreputed God. God does not even need to act to meet your need. Your, meet, your needs have been met in Christ. Didn't, is that not what he said in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 12? He said, For we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit that is of God, that we may know the things that are freely given to us. It has been given. Past tense. If you think serving God is all about getting something from God, God, you don't even need to serve God to get anything. Because the Bible says, He causes rain to fall on the farm of the just and the unjust. He freely gives to all things. Everything He created, He sustains. You don't need to be born again for you to receive from God. So, change your, the, the narrative of your spiritual experience this night. So, you must hunger for Him. You must desire Him. And when a man is hungry for God, you know. If you are hungry for food, natural food, Nobody, you don't need to tell anybody, they will know. You begin to act funny. You move in the direction of your need. If a man is hungry for God, he moves in the direction of God. Even if there is all night for five times every week, he's always there because he's hungry for God. If you say the prayer meeting will last for three hours, he's not tired or afraid because he knows it's not about prayer points, it's prayer life. He will stay in the place of prayer until he literally interacts with God. He will remain there until the heavens open and angels ascend and descend. You know why people don't pray so much in our days? Truly, we are not hungry for God. Your hunger for God will be seen by your sacrifice. It will be seen by your intentions. It will be seen by the things that you do. David said, I was glad when they said, let us go. They will not beg you to come to church one day on, one day off. I'm tired. You know what I told myself? If witches can fly without getting tired, they fly every night, every night, every night. Except you and I stop them from flying. They fly every night. Whether they are sick, they fly. They have malaria, they fly. Are you, do you want to, Oh, yes. If witches can fly without getting tired every day, I will pray every day, whether I'm tired or sick. You don't do it out of feelings. It's a life. Because prayer is that connection with the divine that maintains and secures your victory, that maintains and secures your, 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 your abilities in God on a daily basis. Take your place, oh God, in our lives. May God replace every hunger in your life with a hunger for Him. I'm praying it again and you, your life will be implicated this night. May God replace every hunger in your life with a hunger for Him. Hunger for Him. Oh, you will know. you find yourself going on 40 days, praying, fasting, 30 days, 21 nights, of prayer and praise in his presence and you are not tired the next time you have leave from your office is not to go around and just start gallivanting or distracting yourself with all kinds of things the next time they give you leave you look for somewhere pay for two nights and you close that door and say i'm not seeing the sun till i see the lord when was the last time but too full of carnality that's why the devil is not afraid of us that's why there's no revival in our churches. That's why there's no revival in our city. 
That's why God is almost being snuffed out. But this night, there, there will be a rise of burning ones here. Number three, fellowship. That's why you have prayer and fasting, meditation, waiting, learning to wait on the Lord. So your prayer time does not end because the time is over. It ends when God comes. You need to learn how to wait. You need to learn how to wait. Those of you that are called into the prophetic ministry. In fact, ministers generally, a minister is a waiter. You need to learn how to wait on God to hear his voice, not the voice of your thought. You are a prophet. If you don't wait on God to hear his voice, you will hear the voice of demon spirits. You will hear the voice of mammon, money. Nobody puts you under pressure. You are not ashamed to tell them, wait until I've heard God. Lord, we wait on you. We wait on you, Lord, we wait on you. Listen, we are going to pray now. Fellowship. 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 Spending quality time with God. Spending undivided time. Not that you put your phone, you are watching YouTube and you are praying. You are wasting time. You are sending text message. You are you are doing one thing or the other. No, you are just wasting time. Finish it and then wait on him. Switch off that phone. Switch off that device. Switch off that distraction. Some of the distractions around us, if you can wait on God, those things will wait for you. I'm a living witness. Apostle, we want to give you some money. 500,000. Thank you. When? On Wednesday. Sorry, come on Thursday. Me, I have come to a point where I believe what I need in this life is not money. Yes. Me, not church. SG and I may need money for projects for this and that. If I need money, it's for you. But me, my own life, what I need is a three-letter word. G-O-D. That's all. Learning to stay. I remember in 2016... The first time I had an encounter with the voice of God. Oh God. See, you will know men by their encounters. They don't need to tell you. If you meet a man that has had spiritual encounters, he doesn't need to open his mouth twice. You will know. It has a way of malforming their life. It dents their identity and gives them a new one. You can't meet with God and be ordinary. No. No. 2016 birthday was coming and I decided I needed something different so I decided I was not going to celebrate the birthday like other times four days to the birthday I locked myself somewhere went on the fast that will be the first time I'm going that long without food boy it was not easy on the second day I was seeing this I was seeing the, the roof like the ground and the ground like the roof Everything within me, including the body. You know, David said, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. Everything within me was saying, food. Food. But I, I, I told myself, I said, it's either I get God or nothing else. If I would die, let it be that I died looking for God. At least I will escape to eternity. All the food you have been eating on your birthdays all these years, what has it done to you? And I'm not against eating food. I'm just saying there are times when you need to keep away distractions. On the fourth day in the morning, imagine if I had quit on the second day. Imagine if I had quit on the third day and said, after all, it's three days dry. I'm coming out now. On the fourth day, 4 a.m. in the morning, that cold morning, everywhere was dark. I was in that children's hall back there in Massacre. That was when I heard the voice of God. And for the first time, God would speak to me and he would, out of his mouth would be a scripture. He said two things. He said, I have made you light. Then he mentioned the scripture. 
when I jumped out of that experience, I went to the scripture, it was exactly. You can take anything from me now. You can't take that encounter. It's too real. Anytime I talk about it, I remember it as if it's happening now. I remember everything was shaking. I woke up with fear. That's why I don't know why people are afraid of the devil. You've not met God. The one that sits on fire, his throne is fire. Even the devil cannot try it. That's why all that God needs to do is reveal himself to your enemies. That's all. He came to Abimelech in the night and said, Oh boy, you are dead. Just hand over the wife back. That was all God said. Though. He just appeared to Abimelech and the Bible says all the women in his household, their wombs were shot. That's the God we are talking about. People don't fear God. They don't reverence God these days. When you say, oh, close your eyes, lift your hands. When you, when you, when you, when you try to get people to a mode of worship, they don't do it because they don't have reverence for God. They have not met God. They don't know the one who they worship. Jesus said, ye worship who you do not know, but we worship who we know, for salvation is of the Jews. He said, but yet the hour is coming, and now is the time, where it will not be about this mountain or in Jerusalem, but true worshippers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. I heard that voice. Everything in that room was shaking. When God speaks to you, his audible voice, everything in you will be a loudspeaker. I don't know how to explain it. It looks like I'm telling a joke. Huh? It looks like I'm lying. But I will ask the hand of God to come on people today to prove what I'm telling you. Everything in you will be a loudspeaker. Your ear will, be, will, will echo it. Your legs will echo it. Everything. I have made you light. Anything you take from me, you can't take that one. I can die with it. Even if you take all the money in my account, carry go. I have never struggled for that. But that voice, it is that voice that has made me a voice to you. I didn't go to any Bible school. All I had was the voice of God. If you are hungry and you give him time in fellowship, he will come to you. Whether you are a carpenter, whether you are a bricklayer, whether you are a shoemaker, whether you are an office person, whether you are a housewife, he can come to you in the kitchen. He can come to you in your living room. He can come to you while you are driving. He can come to you anywhere. He can, even in a hospital ward, he can pass around you and you feel the anointing and you begin praying. Not because you just want to pray, but you have a proof. And then the last thing, the last key as we pray is purity. Purity. Spiritual encounters will not come to a man that doesn't understand the place of purity. If you love God enough, you will live consecrated to Him. Holiness will become your lifestyle. Because of your reverence for God, there are things you will exempt yourself from. There are things you will guard your mind from, your heart from. I know the blood of Jesus cleanses, but I, there is a relationship I have with the Holy Spirit that will not make me do some things. Joseph said, how will I do this wickedness before God? God was not there physically, but he was conscious. Unfortunately, in our days, there is no longer respect for purity and holiness again. Even on the altar now, on the altar now, Pastors are dabbling into all kinds of things. Sleeping with people's wives. Witchcraft. The power of God is no longer there. It's now witchcraft they use. Manipulation of every kind. Manipulate. If, so, if such a pastor comes here now and sees all this crowd, say, ah, if I raise seed, I can get one million. People no longer do ministry with the fear of God. Where is purity in the church? And they think they can get God. With all that, you want to live like other people. And you think God will come to you. No, sir. There are some sins that I have decided. I know that the blood of Jesus is available. But I vowed with my life. I will not do. If the devil likes, let him gang up the whole demons of hell. 
We have been like this for four years plus, and God will keep us. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? I know the blood of Jesus is there, but I don't need it. I just don't want to. You don't understand. When, when you walk so conscious with God to a point where you literally feel his presence like somebody walking around you. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Don't you think that God was so real to him and because of that, Enoch decided to live a lifestyle of holiness. That you can separate yourself and say, in my generation, I will live for God. Other young men can be doing this, but I will not. Other young ladies can be doing this, I will not. There's no purity in the church. That's why we don't see angels. That's why Jesus hardly appears to people. Gossips, quarrel, malice, envy, unforgiveness, all of these things. And we think that, no. The Bible says, pursue peace with all men. And holiness without which no man can see the Lord. I know that God loves us, but His standard doesn't change. And tonight we must return to Him. Blessed are the pure in heart. Brothers and sisters, I'm not here to condemn you. I'm here to draw the standard. If you want to rise with God, if you want to go into dimensions of experiences with God, if you want your life to be a living witness of the glory and the power of God regardless of the sphere where you are purity must be part of it are we ready to pray tonight many of us will have to divorce many things this night many of us will have to rededicate our life afresh if you are not ashamed and some of us here will have to surrender to God again and say God I'm tired of playing games I want to mean business with you. It was in old age that God, that Jesus appeared to John. So don't think that I'm only talking about young people. You say, Apostle, I'm now 65 years old. There's nothing I can do. No. John was 90 something when God appeared to him. Historically, John was 90 something. He was the last apostle to die. Moses was 120 years old. And the Bible says because of his many experiences with God, his eyes will not grow dim. Even the strength of his youth did not fail. That means at 120, Moses was as strong as 30. And God was so jealous about him that when he died, God himself buried him. Nobody knows the place. Ask yourself, what was it about Moses that Satan came and asked for his body? Satan didn't ask for the anointing. Satan said, I want the body. There's some, this body has caught something with God. I want it. I lost Enoch. I can't lose this one. I want this one. You, when you die, can your bones bring back a dead man? The Bible says the memory of, it, of the righteous is blessed. Can your memory steer revival? There are men we talk about in history, in church history now, that anytime you talk about them, a hunger for God begins to burn. You can't mention Ben Sini Daosa and somebody is not convicted. Was he not a man like us? Okay, I'm talking about men. What of Catherine Kuma? What of Amy Semple McPherson? Maria Woodward Etta? That the first time she opened her mouth and cursed a person, they were mocking her in a meeting. They were, you know, this Holy Ghost, all these things, you see people falling down. Oh, they were mocking her and claiming it was demonic. And she turned and looked at one of them. She said, God judge you. And instantly the person's tongue grew out and didn't go back. The tongue swallowed, grew out like this and didn't go back. God judge you. You, you say God punish you 49 times in a day. Nothing happens. Or you get to that point where somebody offends you. You felt bad but you forgive the person. And five months later, wherever the person was, he came back. He said, I'm sorry. I've not had my peace since that time. Stand up, let's pray. We wait on you. Lord, we wait on you. Oh, we wait.
wait on you. Oh Lord, we wait. Just lift your hands. Let's sing it for three times. We wait on you, Lord. Lord, we wait on you. Oh, we wait. Oh, Lord. We wait on you. Anywhere till we catch your presence. We wait. Arakaba Shikayaba. Oh, we wait. One more time. We wait on you. Alabanda Manakae. Come on, sing it with hunger, sing it with desire. Somebody has been drawn back to the Lord. I have believed in my heart. God is restoring you back to Himself. That you were able to help me. Oh, oh, oh. But now, Lord, I see my love. Please and show, and show yourself strong, and in my heart, and in my heart. Oh, come on, can you be passionate about him tonight? Say, oh Lord, be magnified. Oh. Your hands I sing it to him with magnified hey. above all the things that I've exalted, above all the images, above all the mundanes, and there is no Sing it to him tonight, oh God, oh God, my eyes are saving my God, oh God, one more time, without the instrument, we magnify, we magnify. With depth from your heart, say you are. Sing it with passion. Sing it returning to Him. Sing it hungry for Him. Oh, that is nothing.
Now listen to me. I'm going to give us three minutes to cry out to God. Why we are crying out? Listen carefully. Don't assume you didn't hear me. This is a call to surrender. God is calling someone from a place of love. If you are here, no movement anywhere. If you are here and you know inside of you, everything inside of you is telling you you need to surrender to the Lord afresh. Or you want to rededicate your life to Him afresh. This is an atmosphere of love. I want you to forget about your title. Forget about your reputation. Wherever you are, I want you to walk to the front and meet me at the altar. And then the rest of us, in three minutes, I want you to take any position you want and cry to God and say, Lord, from today, it's all about you. I'm ready for another encounter. I'm ready for another experience with you. Those that need to surrender to him, can you come to the front? Those that need to rededicate their life to Jesus, can you come to the altar? And then the rest of us, I want you to cry to him and say, Lord, from today, from today is all about you. Take any position you want. Stand, sit, lie, roll, whatever you want to do. And I want you to cry to him. It's all about you. You just pray. Everybody pray. Forget about my singing. You just talk to God tonight. It's a personal moment. That's why you came. Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the power of worship. Well, it's all about you, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. It's all about you, Jesus. Just pray, just pray, just pray. Talk to Him everywhere. Lord, I'm tired of an ordinary life. I desire an experience. I desire a living experience with you. Oh, I'm sorry for complacency. I'm tired of a lazy Christianity. All I want is you, Lord. All about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Hey, it's all about you. Oh, 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 oh. Hey. Ay, 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 ay. Oh, 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 oh. Ika kaka 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 kaka, 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 ika kaka kaka k
It's all about you. I will lay down my idols and gods that I've made. Some of us relationship, some of us cars, houses, material things. But Lord, I will bow to to no other God but you alone. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus' name. Now, everybody, could you stand? Just stand everywhere. Those of you in front, whether you are rededicating your life or it's your first time to surrender to Jesus, we are going to make that prayer together. And God is beginning a new journey with you. Your life from today will become like that of John the Beloved in the Isle of Patmos. And you will yet see the Lord Jesus again. Please put your right hand on your chest. Those of you in front. Repeat after me. Say Lord Jesus. I come to you today. I surrender to you today. I believe that you died. And rose again. For my salvation. And tonight. I surrender. Tonight. I rededicate my life to you I declare that I will live for you I ask that you will bring me into a walk with you bring me into divine experiences with you in Jesus name just play strings now Father I pray for these ones in front and I thank you because right now, by the blood of Jesus, their sins have been forgiven. It's a new beginning for them. And through the blood, we have access to one spirit. I ask that while they stand right now, that your spirit will come upon them. Mightily upon and within them. Bring them into fresh experiences and encounters with you. Let their lives never remain the same again. Let addictions be broken. Let habits be broken. Let the life of your spirit find expression in them. In Jesus mighty name. Amen and amen. God bless you. Who are they following? Who are they talking to? Okay. Please just turn behind. Follow the lady, the counselor waving her hand. Our counselors would like to talk with you briefly and pray with you. And then take your contact. God bless you. Let the lifting of my hands touch your heart. Let the leaves singing of my song touch your heart. Oh, my worship, touch your heart. Please everybody just stand Before we close I want to pray one prayer for us Everybody stand Just stop the music Everybody stand Stretch your hands towards you Eyes closed Please I'll tell you when to play There's such a thing as a grace for encounters Eyes closed everywhere Please God is able to make all grace abound the grace that I want to ask the Lord to bring upon every one of us now is the grace that will bring you into visual and pictorial experiences with God. And 
during the course of the prayer and after the prayer some of you will be caught up in visions some of you will have encounters some of you will be taken out of your body briefly into heaven some of you will have anointings come on you the holy spirit told me this afternoon that there will be seraph angels seraphim in this place a seraphim or a seraph is an angel of fire those were the angels around the throne of god that isaiah saw i call them the burning ones they come to proclaim the holiness of god and right now they are in this place and they will drop the coals of fire that they touched isaiah's lip with they will drop it on some people now so everybody eyes closed stretch your hands Father, I pray and I ask you, dear God, in the name of Jesus, that you release upon this house, upon Pneumatic, and everyone following online, the grace for spiritual encounters, the grace for spiritual experiences, that you will open to us new portals, new gateways, new doorways in the heavens, and let men be caught up into experiences that are heavily bound i'm asking that even right now that as i pray that the ministry of angels will begin to be activated in this place touch your people anoint those that should be anointed put your coals on fire upon your people bring purification bring power bring sanctification bring wisdom bring might let your name be glorified touch us i pray anoint the eyes of those who desire visions right now and let them begin to see into the realm of the spirit anoint the minds of your children to understand let dreams visionary experiences be activated i thank you father bring men into dimensions of your presence i ask for the experience that is in the throne room to be manifested in this place and let your name be glorified when i say in jesus name we are going to say amen three times you don't need to shout it just say amen three times there are also some people that you feel fire on your legs you begin to feel fire on your legs now father let all of this happen right now and let your name be glorified as it happened with ezekiel when he saw the glory of god as it happened with moses on the mountain let it happen now in Jesus name stop that's it that's it I stopped the sound so you know this is not about me keyboard yes that's it father touch them one after the other dimensions of spiritual experiences some of you have desired to see angelic beings and right now at the count of three i declare that your eyes will be open one two two let your eyes be open now see the angels in this place that's it the spirit of revelation is coming on eight people eight people eight people eight people holy ghost where are they the spirit of revelation is coming on eight people Pargo Tamdra Hatoa Valika Prefetigo Zanarka 
Father, let the spirit of wisdom rest upon people here. As you desire it, let it come upon you right now. With your hands stretched forth towards you, I want you to say, I receive. I want you to say it again, I receive. Yeah, it's still dropping. It's still dropping. It's still dropping. I'm feeling fire on my legs. There are some people that will have that encounter right now. There are some people that will come into that experience right now. You are being touched by the seraph angels. There are a number of you that will have those experiences. I see the hand of God coming on three ladies here. You are fashion designers. That's what the Lord told me. Three ladies. You are into fashion design. And there's a mighty anointing coming on you now that will begin to bring creativity. Unusual creativity. I just saw that now. Father, I pray for anyone that is called into ministry here. As their hands are stretched forth, I activate the baptism of power. 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 Anyone with a ministerial gift or an office, let the grace that brings the performance, the manifestation of power as of old, rest upon you now. Now, 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 now. Now. Help, help. What are the ushers? Oh my God. I told you to stop so that they will know it's not about keyboard. All of you here, this, this row, all of them, the Lord is asking me to do something. I want you to look at my hands. When I lift my hands and open it, just these two rows, I want you to look at it. He told Elisha, Nevertheless, if you see me while I'm lifted up, just open your eyes, look at my hands, and whatever you desire, like a mantle, like an anointing, it will come on you. Father, in the name of Jesus, as, there, as my hands are lifted up now, and their eyes are open, I declare, let them receive according to their heart desires. That's it. Help them. It's coming on people. It's coming on people. Young men, look at my hands here. Look at my hands. There's an anointing coming on you. Coming on you now. Coming on you now. Your life will be a sign and a wonder. That man. Yes, you. Yes, you, sir. You're smiling here. Yes. Just stretch your hands towards me. Stretch your hands towards me. Father, I release a new kind of anointing. Play the keyboard now. Something will begin to happen in your experiences with God. You are going to have 21 days of uncommon visitation of the glory of God. Receive it right now. For 21 days, you will feel that weight upon you. See, even people that I'm not talking to is coming on them. The weight of his glory rests upon us. Music ministers from today, as your minister, the sounds and the songs of the Spirit will come alive in your heart. You will not stand and sing, think of songs. You will not stand and think of songs. Right now, the mantle of prophetic worship will come on you. And it will be like a well spring. It will be like a spring out of your heart. While you are still singing one song, three other songs are already pushing out of your, your spirits like a stream. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. Receive that grace. You will lead men to the presence of God.
all the glory of his presence we are temple give you reverence so May nothing take away this experience from your children. Let it remain indelible in their minds. Your life will be a witness and a living expression of the glory and the power of God. Your life will be a witness and a living expression of the glory and the power of God. Become a witness of his power. Become a witness of his power. Become a witness of his power. You can never remain ordinary. Jesus will glorify you. Yet your name continually be lifted high. 